chapter 21 verse number 17 it says if we wish to take a pastime and by the way here the word pastime is a woman the Arabic in Arabic the word lehu goes for women so if we want to take a woman for fun we should surely have taken it from things near us this is a Muslim translation but the fact doesn't say that it says from ourselves from the dunna if we go to the interpretation this is chapter 1 21 verse number 17 and I will show you the Muslim interpretation so you will see I'm not making things up you will see here Do you hear me? Yeah, yeah, just me today because I don't want to. Yeah. This is Ibn Abbas. No problem. It's okay. This is Ibn Abbas. This is a Jalalain. You can read whatever interpretation you want. And this is the official government website of the Kingdom of Jordan. How do we desire to find uh, some diversion that which provide diversion in the way of a partner or a child, which means a woman or a child? We would have found it with ourselves. Mm -hmm. Ourselves. From among the beautiful eyed Huris or the angels. Allah will have sex with the Huris. <laughs> what is that? Now the Muslim they say to us, Allah is God, Allah is Almighty, Allah is etc. And then Allah He Himself He said to us, if I want to take a woman for fun, and look, even the word He used for women is insulting. He did not even say a wife. He said lahwan, lahu, fun, mean fun, literally mean fun, which means if we want to take a woman for fun, which means for sex, we will take it from the beautiful eyed Huris. Now here we have many problems. First of all, He says from ourself, and yet they say to us that Allah is one. But yet it's ourself and they cannot say this metaphorical because he is talking about taking a partner which means another individual right a woman can't be himself otherwise uh, Allah must be male and female at the same time so and when you say to me how I can have a son and have a girlfriend that's when you are a male you are confirming to me that you are a male God and you are saying you don't have a female God and that's why you don't have a son and now he is confirming it again if we want to take Lehu which is a female we will take it from who from the beautiful eyed women again he says clearly that those are women if we want to take and now how the Huri, who they are created for Muslims to have sex with, they will, are fit and they are qualified to have sex with Allah, if Allah is not a man. The Muslims say to you, well here he's saying if, it doesn't matter, you know, when I say to you if, it means it's possible, right? Yeah. Okay, so if I say, okay, if I want to marry a woman, she have to be, uh, you know, etc. It's mean, it is possible if I want, this will happen. If it's not impossible, you don't say to me, if I want, I will take from this, because simply, that should be stupid because the women are not from your kind. It's like saying, have you ever seen, uh, imagine an elephant saying, if I want to have a wife, I will marry an ant. That would be funny. Right? Because they are from two different kinds. Do I agree? Yes. Okay. In order for Allah to say, if I want to have a woman for fun, I will take the beautiful eyed Hori, and those are women. Then he admitted and he agreed that he is, must be a man. Because women, they have a private part of a woman, which means women is a word coming from the man. Woo man, woo man, right? So women is as exactly as the man in everything except his the sexual private part. So if we want to take a partner, it's going to be a woman, but the woman is a human being. How she can be your partner? I'm not sure. That. My friend, come on, you are smarter than this. Just denounce this cult. Say I am out of it. Yeah, so what do I do then? Say it, and I will tell you what you will do. I'm out. I am out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Guys, did you hear it? I am out. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for sending this gentleman who sent me a message in Skype saying, I want to debate you. He was challenging me. By the way, you did not lose. You did not lose, my friend. You did not lose. Hold on. You did not lose. You did win. You did not lose. Don't think you lost. You won. No, I'm just asking. I'll just call to confirm some things I've been doing. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just telling them what you said to me in text before you call me. I'm going to debate you, right? You know? <laughs> so, my friend, you are welcome. I'm happy for you. Now, you see, you refuse because all of this doesn't make sense to you and it's stupid. And it's because I've, I've, no, it's because, um, I've never heard of these things before. Everyone's been saying good no things, problem. miracles, um, all sorts of things, you know. Um, and so, yeah. No you problem. know, no one's telling us about these sort of things, which, you know, they're in the hadith and, you know, old sort of sources. Um, yeah. Which I find it, it's yeah. basically lying. I understand, but now, my, my friend, you, you, you said to me, you said to me what you should do best. You should you should do next, right? Should I tell yeah. you what you should do next? Okay, me as a Christian, I believe that me as a person, I have patience to speak to you, even though your mic is giving me a headache, because my Lord, He taught me to love every human being, including the Muslims. God is love, and I advise you to follow the one who teach you to love everybody, because love can change all mankind, can change you to a different person, can make you happy, can make you healthy, hate. 
kill you. It's like a poison. You eat it, you are the first one to die with it. So mm -hmm. when Jesus, he said, love your enemy, bless them, those who curse you. Maybe it sounds like, okay, I am being nice to others, but the fact, the first thing I do, I am being healthy. I am being healthy in my heart. I am being healthy in my mind. And I am stress-free. Because when I love everybody around me, I have no stress. Secondly, I'm happy. Number three, I trust myself. Because, you know what, I don't have any. Yes, they hate me, they want to kill me, but I have no fear. I love everybody. So I say to you, and I invite you in front of everyone, to accept the Lord, the Messiah, as your Savior, who said, love your enemy. The one who resurrects people from the grave. The one who said to the blind, see, and he saw. Not like Allah, who said to Muhammad, read, and he could not read. The one who said to the man, he cannot walk, walk, and the man carry his bed, and he walked. The one who said, for, I forgive your sin, but don't do sin again. That is Jesus, my friend. So I invite you to the King of Kings, the one who have the wisdom which nobody have. I invite you to read the Bible from the first chapter of John all the way, the four Gospels. It's amazing. It's so beautiful. And you will never find something better. So I invite you, my friend, to believe in the best of the best. And that is the Messiah, the Christ, my Lord. What do you say? Well, obviously, first I got to go and um, read the Bible and, you know, see what it's saying and, you know, look. Um, at the historical Jesus and you know just find out things no problem People. my friend I went I, I really I wanted from my heart that you would say I believe but uh, for sure we want you to believe from your heart but not by your tongue we are not like Muslim who say Shahada we don't want you to do that we want you to be a believer but again I remind you that me and you we might go to sleep now and we never wake up and salvation is an opportunity so I invite you for the opportunity of salvation and you think and you read and this is why actually I am the one who told you go read We don't want you to believe it blindly. We want you yeah. to have faith based on truth not this I can understand it. No problem. I understand and I'm, I'm not saying to you just say I believe you know No, I want you to believe I don't want you to say I believe but yet you don't you don't believe but so I'm saying at least I can understand what it's saying compared to the Quran where you know You just rely on translators, you know telling the truth and things right. Yeah, and that's why I'm here to help you my friend I'm happy that you called me today I'm happy that you decide to leave Islam. I will be happy if you call me anytime soon and say to me, I decide to accept Jesus. Um, yeah, of course, as, in, as I embark on this journey, obviously I'm going to, um, you know, certain questions are going to come to my mind. And also, sure, I'm my friend. Thank you very much for calling me. If you feel you change your mind, you want to say you accept Jesus, just let me, let me know and I will be happy to hear it. And everybody here will be happy for you. We have almost 700 people listening and they will be really happy to hear you that you accept the Messiah. And the Lord, the Lord, he said, when a lost soul came back to him, a happiness will be in the kingdom of heaven which means the whole heaven will be happy for you for accepting the Messiah. That's why I, me, myself, I wanted to invite you, and I believe the Lord using me to speak in my time to you, which means the Messiah himself is speaking right, so to what's you. The process, what's the process? For example, if you read the Bible and so on, and then you, know, you realize what's the truth, um, then what do you do from there? Right, yeah. Is well, there, don't you have to say anything, or you know, is, is there like a formal no, way? No, you see, my friend, you read the Bible, but don't read it as a story. You try, you see, this is what I do since I was a kid. This is why I read differently from what people do. You notice, know, like me, when I speak to you, I go deep in the words, right? So I analyze the words. So when I read the Bible, I close my eyes and I imagine myself there. Imagine yourself living the story, not hearing a story. So you want to know what Jesus is saying? Live the story and you will enjoy it. And you will notice that each time you read the same story in the Bible, it fits with something happening to you right now in your life. And no matter how many times I read the Bible, each time I read it, I find something there. Now it's happening to me. Even though the Bible is a book written 2,000 years ago, it's not going to be expired because the wisdom of Christ is amazing. So you live the story and you will see that Lord, he will speak to you within that story, even though it is mentioned 2,000 years ago for people who have no electricity, who have no TV, who have no, they have nothing. I mean, it's life is very simple, a cow and, and donkey and etc. Yeah, I've heard one thing. Is it true that Jesus um, prophesied the falling of the temple in Jerusalem or was the... Prophesy what? The, the falling of the temple. Yes, yes, yes. He, he, he prophesied that the tem temple will be destroyed and that's what exactly happened. But this is not not what made Jesus Jesus. My friend, it's not about Jesus prophesying something and oh, something but if, I, if I say I'm someone, then I got to prove it, right? You can't yeah, just yeah, say I'm I know, but I mean, but I mean, I mean, there's tons of things Jesus, he said, they become to be true. But this is not what made Jesus Jesus. Jesus is unique. He's not a prophet only. The only prophet actually in the whole universe is God himself. Because a prophet of God, he have nothing of his own. He prophesied what God told him, correct? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, so the real prophet is God. So Jesus is a prophet, but yet he is our Lord. So all the prophecies he said, anything he says is true. Anything he said is going to happen or it may be happening already. So I am not surprised to see things he said is happening or will they will happen. But there's more than this. There's things which are amazing beyond the imagination. There's something beautiful about him. The Messiah, well, when you believe in him, your life change. You see, you believe in Muhammad, you will notice many, they go, let us say, they go to jail for a month. They met with some Muslims, they share Shahada, convert to Islam, and second day he come out, you want to do jihad.
so Islam changed you to be a violence person, a person who goes for violence, and Jesus, he do the opposite. Isn't it chapter nine? Sorry, it is, it is stated in chapter nine, which I believe is one of the most violent. Um, no, no, the whole Quran is violent. The whole Quran, well, but chapter, well, chapter five, this is, uh, actually, the Quran is the Quran does not contain much violence as Muhammad life stories. Muhammad, he cut a woman to pieces when she's alive.